Hey guys, it's Phoenix Automotive here again. In this video, we're going to be going over to 2013 to 2019 Ford Fusion units. Now we have two different units here. They're both the same screen size, same specs. The only difference is if you have an auto AC or you have a manual AC vehicle. The manual AC vehicles, you're going to have this screen and you're going to connect the factory connectors to here. But with the auto AC vehicles, you do get this cover piece. And what you need to do is remove the factory AC board with those uh, pins on it, matching up to these holes and put them over like so. That way you can hook up the factory connections here. We also provide screws here to mount down this cover piece along with that motherboard that you're gonna take out from the factory. Just a quick rundown. This is a manual AC unit. Other auto AC units may look like this or um, it may look like this with the Sony. If you do have the Sony sound system, uh, Sony is retained, so the factory Sony sound system is retained. This is the manual, the rest of them should be auto AC. So rest of them should be getting this type of unit. The only unit where you'll be getting this is if you have the manual AC vehicle. With that said, these are the two screens. You're also going to be getting the brain of it, and you're going to be getting a big connector that connects to here and connects straight to the uh, screen. Couple things to note, if the screen is black, check if this connector is fully seated in. Maybe try to wiggle it or maybe the touch isn't working. See if this is connected well. We have come across instances maybe this cable is not good, so let us know if you have troubles with touch or the screen going black. At the back of the unit, you have a couple things, a bunch of black connectors here. The main connector would go into here and the Wi-Fi antenna, you screw on to the top nearest the edge of the unit and the GPS antenna uh, if I can show you right here, this is the GPS antenna. We screw this onto here, and this antenna we put anywhere we can get uh, green bars. Uh, if you go into settings, GPS monitor, see if you have at least one green bar. The radio antenna you'll get is right here. We plug this into here, and you make a factory connection to this. That will get your radio antenna. This one is not needed. This one you can leave dangling. Moving forward, if you have a factory backup camera, you're gonna get two different types of harnesses. You, you either use one or the other, depending if you have this latch connector, which is small, or this big one. They both have two similar outs, two male RCAs, so one male, one male, and these two right here. If you have a four inch screen, you will likely use the small connector. We have to come across where you do have a four inch screen and you need the big connector. That's maybe sometimes where you would get the wrong connector. But majority of the time, if you have an eight inch screen, you would be using the big one. If you have a four inch, or you would be using this, uh, I mean, you would have a small screen for the backup camera, so this would be your connector. Sometimes it would be the big one. So putting this aside, we'll come back to it later. Let's look at some peripheral connectors, like this one is the USB connection. It's a brown connector. And that goes right here, nearest the Wi-Fi antenna and the GPS antenna. There's two USB ports, one of them labeled USB 1 and USB 2. If you have a built-in CarPlay in the unit, you would plug it up to USB 1. Uh, they both do data reading. Also, we provide you an adapter. Now, we recommend using the adapter on USB 2, just because USB 1 is the primary one that we use for built-in CarPlay. And this connector goes to the factory car to retain one of the factory USB ports. Next up is this two connectors with a bunch of RCAs on it. The more important one is this black piece, and this one will retain your factory backup camera. So if we plug it into here at the way top, you can see we have a bunch. Um, one, there's a purple wire. This purple wire is a power wire. The brown wire is a trigger wire to trigger the reverse screen, so get 12 volts to it. Uh, so then again, the purple one is the power wire for powering the camera if you have a camera you want to power. Looking at all these RCAs, we have a bunch of yellow ones. The main important one is the one labeled camera and it's a female RCA. And based on the connector you have in your car, you're going to use the big one or the small one. We'll use the small one for this video. You're going to connect the male RCA to this female labeled camera. And on this two prong connector right here, there is one on the main harness that I have to show you later but you connect this to the car. Let's look at the other RCAs. You have two red and white, or one red, one white. They're both labeled aux in R and aux in L. These are your audio inputs that you can put for if you plan on putting an audio source in, and then you would go to the AUX app to play that audio source. And the video that goes along with these two red and white RCAs is called video in. So we're gonna be using video in, aux in R and aux in L. These are your video inputs. 
The other RCAs are for aftermarket camera and uh, let's see, we have F cam, F video in and S cam in, uh, labeled front video in, side camera in. You can really just hook up any cameras you want to this and put that camera wherever you want. So these two RCAs are for extra cameras that you want to put in. The other two right here are video output one and video output two. Now what these video outs will do is it will mirror whatever you put into your video in. So say I have like a movie going into video in, the video out one and video out two will duplicate whatever is shown on this video in port. So the main thing with the black connector is you need to hook up the factory backup camera. Now let's move on to the other RCAs. This one in particular is for aftermarket sound system. You can see there for front left, front right, back left, back right. And you also have a gray wire here that is a remote amp wire to turn on your amplifier as a remote wire. And this one would go right here, right there. Uh, USB again goes to the way top right here next to the GPS. And the next thing we're gonna look at is the main harness. So on the main harness, couple things you need to connect. First is the main connector, which goes into here. Once you have that connected, to get the unit to power on, you do need to plug in this purple connector. And this purple connector goes right next to the black one. It's the only small connector it fits in, so let's put it there. And two connectors here, these will go to the factory car. Just connect those two. Keep in mind, this particular unit, these two units do not retain factory sync. Uh, we do have other units that retain sync if you have that. Some people do uh, aftermarket setup and they take out their factory sync. So this is an option for them. And if you don't like sync, you can always go with this option as well. You can see that there is a red cable here. Now this connector, sometimes there is another place to connect it to. However, don't connect this connector, leave it disconnected. You have some loose wires. Now these loose wires are labeled key one, uh, key two, ILL and brake. These wires are not needed, not to have one that says IR. Again, these wires on the, these loose wires on the main harness are not needed. Looking at the other connectors, we have one of this, this blue and black one. This blue and black one goes to the factory camera harness. Like I showed you earlier, we had the male RCA, and here we have that three prong connector. So make that connection there. Um, other than that, the last thing is the OBD connector. Now this OBD connector, you're gonna hook it up to the, your OBD port below your car, where the driver's side steering wheel is, where your, your feet go, there should be an OBD port. Route that wire behind the car all the way to the unit, and you're gonna connect it to OBD. What this will give you is your RPM and speed reading. And uh, keep in mind, steering wheel controls are retained. So next track, back track, um, volume up, volume down is kept. I believe the uh, sync button, if you do have that on your steering wheel, becomes a mute button or a mode change for the audio source. But those are about it are the connections. So make these two main harness connections, connect the OBD, connect that camera you have right here, and connect it to the unit. Make sure you have the purple one connected and do not connect this red connector. So from there, you can connect this to the car and then you can connect this cable from the screen to the unit. And for AC controls, again, connect these two main connections. If you have the auto AC, you gotta take out the factory board, taking the motherboard out and matching the pins into these holes so that you can secure it on with these screws that we provide. The unit itself, the brain has a 3.5 jack for an external microphone, but you can still use the external microphone on the unit. There is one right there. And there's a reset button right here that you can press with a paper clip or some pin and you just put it in there and press it. Most resets, you just have to press it and you don't need to hold it. With that said, uh, say you have the unit hooked up, air conditioning control is not working, maybe you have a Sony amplified system and the sound is not coming through. One thing to check is your car type. Uh, we have multiple videos on how to set car type, but let's go through a couple uh, car types here. So if you have a manual AC vehicle, you're gonna be wanting to go on the car type Mondeo LOLO. -L -O. So that's for manual AC. For the auto AC, there's two different types. If you have a Sony amplified system, you're gonna be on Mondeo HI. However, if you have an auto AC vehicle and you do not have a Sony amplified system, you're gonna be on Mondeo LO. So there's three different car types, LO, 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 and HI. LO, LO is for manual AC. 
LO is for auto AC, no Sony amplifier. And high is for the Sony amplified vehicles. So that does it with this quick run through. Again, if you need to check the car type, we do have videos on how to set the car type. LO, 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 and high. To choose car type, you're gonna go at the top, the apps at the top, you can scroll left and right to the gear icon settings. Then on the left, depending on if you have PX3 or PX6, PX3 is going to be advanced. PX6 is going to be install set. In the advanced, it's going to be either 8861 or 666888. Same thing with install set, 666888 or 8861. After you've done that, you should be going through a menu. You can press, uh, it could be set on Mondeo high, low, or low, low, depending on which one. You're going to press that car type. It'll come up with like a, a green screen, and then you have to press the car type again, where you'll get a picture of the vehicle. You can check mark the box at the right corner of the picture, top right corner of the picture, press OK. And then once you've done that, you can press the back button on the bottom left, save and reboot, and that should set the car type. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.